back again and um, going to show you how to use a spreadsheet and uh, let's just crank up the magnification so we can see everything that's going on. Well, we're going to do the f four basic operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we're going to learn a thing or two about bed mass and how the spreadsheet understands bed mass. Well, for addition, we open up an equal sign on a cell, on an empty cell, and we add two numbers together. I'll add 34 to 56, so I get 90. Now, for subtraction, if I do 34 minus 56, I get a negative number. That's because 56 is bigger than 34. Multiplication, well, I can do something like 19 times 12, and I get 228. Division, division uh, 19 divided by 12, let's try that, see how that works, and I get some uh, decimal number. So as you can see, um, Excel is quite flexible and allows for a, a fair amount of accuracy. I can get negative numbers, I can get decimal numbers, and so on. Bed mass, uh, if you recall, is the order of operations as understood um, by you know, most schools in Ontario. Uh, brackets, exponents are first. Division and multiplication are second addition and subtraction are third. And let's do one where we have 3 plus 4 times 5. Now, the order of operations tell me that multiplication will be done before addition because it, it occurs before in the bed mass acronym. That means 4 times 5 will be multiplied before 3 is added. So 4 times 5 is 20, and then 20 plus 3 make 23. Now, let's try it a different way. How about if we do, in brackets, 3 plus 4 times 5? Well, now we've introduced a bracket, and notice the bracket is done before everything, and the multiplication comes after the bracket. So we've got to find out what's in the bracket first. So that's 3 times 4, which is 7, and 7 times 5 is 35. So that's how we do that. Uh, next, I just want to discuss briefly exponents. Exponents are like this. We get 3 squared, uh, which is done by a shift 6. I'll just go back to that. Okay, so 3 squared, that um, caret symbol is a shift 6 on your keyboard, and you put a 2 after it for the exponent. So that's a 9. If we wanted, say, 3 to the 4th, to get 81, we would do this. So the exponent always goes after the caret. The base of the exponential expression goes before. Now, um, what if we wanted a negative um, exponent? 3 to the negative 3, that is good enough. Well, you see, I just made a mistake here. You see what happened is that um, notice no calculation was attempted here, and this is because I did not put an equal sign in front of my formula. And uh, this is one thing that you have to remember to do, is that put an equal sign in front of all your formulas in order for there to be a calculation. And there you go. And that is 1 over 3 cubed, and I'll prove that. Equal sign 1 over 3 to the power 3, and notice I get the same thing. And notice that is to the power of positive 3, and oops, didn't want that, and that's to the power of negative 3. All right, now what about square roots? Well, there's multiple ways of doing square roots. If I did the square root of 121, which is supposed to be 11, I'm supposed to raise 121 to the power of 1 half, and that's a square root, just like anything else. But another way to do it is using equal sign SQRT 121, oops, 121 in brackets. SQRT stands for square root, and that's one of Microsoft Excel's built-in functions to calculate a square root. And uh, what if you wanted a cube root? Well, you can do cube roots as well, but there is no Microsoft Excel function that I'm aware of to do cube roots. 
So you can do something like 8 to the power of 1 third. You know that raising a number to the exponent of 1 third is the same as a cube root. And there you go. The cube root of 8 is 2.